What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've been able to actually upload anything, but um, I have a few projects going on right now that I think you guys are gonna be super excited about. So we're just gonna jump right into it. So last week I went to go get a mass state inspection for my car. Every year we have to get our cars inspected um, just to make sure that they're roadworthy. And I got this sticker. That's not good. <laughs> a red R is means it's rejected for safety issues. A black R is just rejected for, it could have been because I had a headlight out or uh, like, like no license plate or whatnot, but a red R is not good. So after looking at my report, the um, guy that did my inspection came up to me and he's like, listen, man, he's like, you have a gorgeous car. It is immaculate, but the front end has some play. And he's like, buy some play, like a lot of play. Um, thinking back when I first got the car back in 2016, I never asked the gentleman that I got the car off of if he did anything in the front end or anything like that. So um, the car is almost 30 years. It's a 92 uh, NA and it's almost 2022, so it's almost 30 years old. So uh, I'm pretty sure the ball joints, the inners and the outers have never been changed. And if they have, then they don't look it. So uh, basically what we're gonna get into today is just swapping our inners and outers um, and the uh, lower ball joints in the front end of a Z32. So first things first, always have your ramps ready. Uh, jack up the car either by the front subframe or the frame rails on each side. So we did that. So now we're just gonna get into uh, taking the wheel off. So now that we have the wheel off, I'm gonna go through the parts that you're gonna need for this job. Um, you're gonna need a lower control arm uh, ball joint. I don't have the package because I actually already did it. I'm just going to walk you guys through that. That was done last weekend. Um, but then you're also going to need a boot for the inner and outer. You're going to need an inner tie rod and then an outer tie rod. You're going to need an adjustable wrench. I have two here. Uh, a torque wrench, some snips, a flathead screwdriver, a little mallet, and then a measuring tape. And I'll get into all of this soon. So now since we have our wheel off, okay, the parts we're gonna be replacing is this right here, okay? This is your outer tie rod and your inner tie rod, okay? And then also uh, the ball joint, the lower control arm bar, ball joint here. I already did this the other day, I didn't film it, but I'm just gonna walk you through it. It's very simple to do. Um, and then also later on, I'll be doing another video on how to actually uh, replace the bushings on your lower control arm. But for now, we're just gonna do inners and outers here and that uh, lower ball joint. What we're gonna wanna do is take these retaining clips out, these cotter pins out and uh, loosen up this nut here because if we don't loosen up the nut while this is still tight, it's gonna be extremely hard to get this loose because the knuckle's gonna move when we're trying to loosen this up, okay? So I'm gonna take this cotter pin out, do that, and then we'll get into the next step of actually working on the inner tie rod of the power steering rack. Now that we have the cotter pin out here, all we're gonna do is grab a 19 millimeter socket and get it on here and we're gonna break this loose. Okay, now that we have that broken loose, you make sure that you keep this washer because the, the kit doesn't come with a new washer. So you're gonna keep this washer. Uh, it does come with the new castle nut, so you don't need to use your old one, but I always save these just in case because they are prone to strip. So now, since we got that off, we're not gonna hammer this out or take this out yet, okay? Because what we need to do is actually loosen up the inner tie rod from the power steering rack. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, move this boot out of the way, and then we're gonna break loose the inner tie rod with our adjustable wrench. So as you guys can see, my power steering rack is leaking, and uh, that's gonna be the next video. So that's, a, that's another thing that I have planned for you guys is rebuilding a power steering rack. So I hope you guys stay tuned because uh, that's gonna be a good one. Wow. Okay guys, so now being on the inner part of the car, okay, this is your inner tie rod where it hooks up to the actual power steering rack. Um, it does have this metal retainer clip. Um, there's two ways you can go about this, okay? You can destroy this thing and go off and uh, then you'll have to buy two more. You'll have to get, uh, I forgot exactly what they're called. I'll put a link in the description, but um, you're gonna have to buy two more, okay? Typically nine times out of 10, you, can, like, you can't really reuse these, but what I've learned is if you take a flathead and kind of just pry up each corner 
so there's four sides. If you can pry up those four and keep them kind of straight, you'll actually be able to pry them back down once you tighten in the new inner tie rod. I've done this a few times on the drift car, so I know how to work this. So again, I'm just gonna show you guys. So let's get into it. Once you break it loose, you'll be able to use your hand. And then what I typically do is I'll just pull it out like this and let it drop closer to like to the ground. So if you're gonna reuse the metal clip, you can just leave it on there. If you're not, you'll just pull it off and add the new one. And then you'll see the two edges here. That's where typically you'll use like a screwdriver and a hammer to kind of lock it down. But I'm gonna reuse it, so that's not a problem. So now since we got that out, all we gotta do is just bang this bad boy out. And again, everybody's like, oh, you're gonna mushroom the head. Well, we're not using it, so it doesn't matter. I'll do a comparison right now, and then we'll measure our length, and then we'll put the new one in. Okay, so again, loosey-goosey, not so loosey for the outer. The new outer comes with a new castle nut. Okay. That goes there. And now you gotta be weary of the lengths just because uh, each manufacturer might have a different length on the outer. So as you can see, actually, if this is lined up, this outer is a little bit longer than this one. Here's our inner, okay? So what we have to do, use the grease, and we're gonna kind of grease up our ball here. So if we look, I can barely, I can barely move, I'm trying to move this, like move it around, and I can't. This one, I have two fingers, and I can move it. So that's how we know it's shot. Who always goes on first? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this lock nut off, and then you're gonna throw the boot on, the inner. You're gonna have to push it through the threads a little bit. There it is. Okay. So we get that through the threads, okay? Then we're gonna put our grease on in the ball joint here. Okay, so now we have to work in the grease a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your wrench. Looking for it. You're gonna grab your wrench adjust it to the size, and then you're gonna kinda just move the pivot ball around. Now that we have everything all greased up, we're gonna put our lock nut back on here, okay? If I can get it on there. All right. Gonna do that. Then we're just gonna screw our outer to our inner. And now this is where the measuring tape comes into play. And this is where we're gonna measure uh, how long our inners and outers are. You're still gonna need to get an alignment after doing this job, okay? Sometimes if you're like a professional and you're used to it, uh, you can kind of make do without it. But again, I always recommend just to get an alignment. Um, it's just better safe than sorry. Uh, and then you save money on tires because you're not destroying your tires consistently. But um, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna typically, I, me I measure from the stock OEM setup. I'll go from the middle of this pivot ball here, okay? And then I'll match it up with the middle of this pivot ball here, okay, on the outer. So I'll match that up, and then I just match the ends up from here and here. I'll just match the ends up, so that's where I measure from. As you guys can see, I'm gonna measure from the end here to the middle of the pivot ball. It's about 14 inches, about 14 inches long, okay? So now what I'm just gonna do here, I'm gonna move my boot up a little bit, so I gotta screw it in a little bit. Yep, there we go. And all we do is lock this down. Okay, you wanna make sure you lock this down because when you try to tighten this into the rack, this is gonna, it's gonna screw in. So you gotta make sure you tighten this down at least as snug as you can get it before you put anything else on. So, grab your adjustable and just try to lock her down. And then another way that you could do is what I usually do once I do this, I'll just start the threads from here into the rack just a little bit, 
and then I'll tighten this down again. So then this isn't really like, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of play and this will be locked in place into the knuckle. So then again, it'll give you that leverage that you can tighten this down fully. So we're gonna get the inner into the rack now. And this is always a pain too. Now, since you got a couple threads started in there, all I'm gonna do is move the knuckle onto the outer. So I'm moving the knuckle onto the outer. I'm gonna put the outer. I gotta move it back a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so that's fully seated up. So then what I typically do here is I put the washer down and then I'm gonna lock it down hand tight with the castle nut, okay? Lock it down like that. And then what I'll do is I'll grab my jack and I'm gonna put some pressure on here and then I'll tighten this down. But that's gonna be at the end. All I do is just tighten that down so it's not gonna move on me. Now what I'm gonna do is tighten the inner to the rack fully with my adjustable wrench, lock it down with the lock, put my boot over it and then work on this and we'll be good and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your zip tie that uh, they give you in your kit and you're just gonna I found it easier if you wrap it around through the top of the rack and you come down bring it down low then you can actually see where it's supposed to sit the zip tie is supposed to sit in these like little grooves and then slowly just make sure the zip tie is in place perfect then you grab your snips and you snip that Snip that off, and now we just work to the front. So now I'm just gonna use my jack to apply some pressure to the outer. I just put enough pressure where I see the coilover kind of activate, and then all I'm gonna do is just tighten this down now, and we're good to go. Once that's all done, you have that tightened up, all you're gonna do is uh, put your cotter pin through, lock it down, and the job's complete for at least the inner and the outer. So now, just to talk about the ball joint really quick, okay? So the ball joint is pretty much, it's very simple. If anything, I would do the ball joint before I do the inner and the outer just because uh, you're gonna need to take the outer out of the knuckle so you can actually get to the ball joint and be able to drop everything. Um, it's just, it, it helps a little bit more when the outer's out. Uh, just in my experience, a lot of people can keep it in, whatever, it's just what I do. So typically what I do to replace the uh, ball joint is I turn the wheel all the way to the outside of the car. So this is the driver's side, it's turning left. It's just a little bit easier to get to the lower ball joint castle nut. So what you're gonna need to do, first things first, is undo or unloosen the uh, tension rod, okay? So uh, there's two bolts under here, two 19 millimeter bolts under the arm. Take that off, okay? Then the next thing what I would do is loosen this nut, okay? After you loosen this nut, then loosen the arm. Um, just because if the arm's out, it's gonna be, the arm's gonna swing and whatnot. So that's typically what I do is I just break this loose, then I take that out, then I actually drop the arm and it's good to go. For this, it, it's literally that simple. It's two 19 millimeters. Um, I think that bolt to 19 or a 17 millimeter, um, that bolt with the nut there. And then this is a, uh, I think the lower is a 21 or a 22 uh, lower ball joint here. And then once you get the arm out, all you have to do is you're gonna have to uh, press this out. So there is a, a clip here that holds it into the arm. Take the clip off, then you're gonna have to press this out of the arm, and then you're gonna have to press the new one in, and then you just reverse the steps. Pretty simple. Again, um, you can do it with the outer in, or you can do it with the outer out, it doesn't really matter. Alrighty guys, so got back home, got the alignment done with Kenny. Thank you again, Kenny, always hooking me up. Uh, we got my front wheels uh, changed over too. So I got brand new fronts for tires for the daily. Um, the Federal 595s, what I did is I took them and I'm gonna use them for the drift car. And the car's mint now. So uh, basically everything in the front end's done. Um, I still have to do the lower control arm bushings, which I'm gonna make another video just for you guys for that. And then uh, the power steering rack. We're gonna rebuild the tire power steering rack, um, put the new bushings in and such. So that'll be a good little video for you guys. But. She's ready to go. So I hope this tutorial really helped you guys out and hopefully that once you do this front end work, you do go get an alignment, a proper alignment, because the car's gonna drive incredible. Um, but 
going on from there, if you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button, all right? Help us out. Let's get to 10K. And going off that, if you guys are looking for any additional content, all you have to do is click one of these links here. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.